This is Stephen Wikowski from Christian Music Network, and we're here with Wayne Wayson. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, uh, great. Awesome. 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 So tell me about your, yourself. Well, what do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so apparently you you like music. Yeah, I love music up there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess my musical testimony is um, I was born in a in a very musical family. Okay. Uh, my mother taught piano and accordion and ballroom dance, and my dad was a drummer. And I have two older brothers, two younger brothers. My older brothers, uh, one played bass, the other played drums. And um, the musical gene just kind of passed me by. I had no musical talent whatsoever. I, I was a kid in music class and the teacher asked to keep quiet. Okay. Don't, sing, don't sing too loud because you'll throw everybody else off. <laughs> oh, and... Um, my mother tried to teach me piano and accordion and I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Um, I couldn't tell a, a quarter note from an eighth note. It was just, it was pathetic. And uh, when I was a senior in high school in the spring of my senior year uh, is when I came to Christ. Okay. And uh, he, he delivered me from, you know, from, you know, I, I was one of the drugged out hippies in high school. Wow. And uh, he he pulled me out of that. And uh, after I graduated, there were, I had some Christian friends and, and three guys asked me, said, we're, we want to rent this house. We need a fourth roommate to rent this house. Would you rent it with us? And I said, sure. And so I moved in with them. One of them played guitar like James Taylor. It was really good. And uh, one day I was sitting on the sofa and I picked up his guitar and a voice it, it was, you, you know how you, every now and then you hear a voice that sounds audible to you, but you know, it's not. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it was that, it was that kind of experience where the voice just said, you're going to learn how to play this. And uh, in a month I was, I was playing it. Uh, suddenly I could understand music like I couldn't before. It was like the bill was rent in two and, and I could understand music and in a couple months, I was writing songs and just having the time of my life. And that was that was the spring of 1972. And uh, I've been playing ever since. Cool, 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 cool. So let me, uh, so let's uh, talk, talk about your songs. Uh, you have Pity Pot. So tell me about that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Pity Pot, that. That was actually, I wrote that probably around 1976, 77. <laughs> um, I was married in 1975, and my wife and I moved into a community, a Christian community. And uh, pity pot was like a, a favorite little phrase, they'd say. If anybody was feeling sorry for themselves, they'd say, well, get off your pity pot. Right. And... Uh, so it kind of stuck with me. And I basically just wrote a song around it about, um, you know, it's it's not about chronic depression, which is a serious matter and something sure. that, you know, we need to take seriously. But the, but the song is more about uh, when we just get to feeling sorry for ourselves because things didn't go the way we wanted. Right. And, and we like the attention that, that it brings us so we milk it out and uh, and we we don't want to get off our pity pot because we we enjoy the attention too much. Right. And right. so we'll, we'll we'll blame it on the devil. We'll blame it on everything else. But it's really our our deal. Sure. Yeah. I know some Christians like that, you know, and just like, you know, and I uh, and, 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 uh, and I just say, you know, you, you can come back when you grow up. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like, come on, you know. But, 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 is it the truth? You know, they just like, you know, they get into the zone and just like saying, okay, 
I'm going to, I'm not going to wait for you. I'm going to just go on and you can come back when you grow up, you know? Right. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah. So I decided to make a video of it and just have a lot of fun with it and uh, went down to a local park in the rain and made a fool of myself. Right. Right. And, great uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 So you will always have a song called Don't Tell Me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Tell Me. Um, one of my mother's favorite sayings was uh, nobody changes overnight. And when I got saved, it was it was an overnight change. Sure. Um, you know, I, one day I was a long haired hippie starting to study palmistry and getting into the occult. And um, I went to a local library to check out books on palmistry and turned around in the aisle and there was a bright red book that caught my eye. When I pulled it out, it's called The Late Great Planet Earth. Okay. Wow. By Hal Lindsey. Okay. Well, yeah. And, wow. and yeah, it, it piqued my attention. So I checked that out too. Never got to the palmistry books. Read that book about halfway through. He had a sinner's prayer. I knelt by my bed, read the sinner's prayer, got back in bed, finished the book, and then uh, took all of them back to the library. Never cracked open the, the others. Um, but it, it radically changed my life. It wasn't a really emotional experience. It was really quite a matter of fact. Nope, on my bed, read a prayer, got back in bed. But the next morning, I was radically changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've heard testimonies uh, uh, also that, that people read that book and, say, and their life is now changed because you know, they're, they're, they're Christians now. Right. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. You know, it's kind of ironic that I, you know, now after studying it, I can't really say I agree a whole lot with Hal Lindsey's eschatology. Oh yeah, exactly. The book did its job. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. We had it at our own house, you know. So, so I read it, you know, and just like say, well, okay, you know, cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I I didn't understand it until I. Became a Christian, you know. Right. You know, so, you know, yeah. So, pretty cool. So, yes. Uh, 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 you always have the, the song, uh, uh, When when We Reach the End. Yeah, that's, that's a newer song. Um, I, I just, I, I was thinking of, of when, when everything, it seems like the whole world's coming crashing down on us. And we get to the point where we wonder, you know, can I, can I take this anymore? You know, I'm, it's like, I, I'm at the end. I can't handle any more of this. And, and I thought of that, you know, when, when we reach that point, when we feel like we've reached the end, but yet there's another end that's more positive. Sure. And and I tried to put a positive spin on it that, okay, when we reach that end, we cast all our cares on, on Jesus. And, you know, there's a line in there. We don't always know what he'll do, but remember he cares for you. Yeah. And sometimes that's all we need to know to carry us through that. No, God's not, God might not tell me what he's going to do about it. And I might think, well, you should do this or that about it. And God's got something else entirely planned. And, you know, it, he pulls us through. And, but then there's another end yeah. where, you know, an end to earthly life where, where we're in his presence. Sure. And, and that is actually just the beginning. So when we reach the end, it's kind of a play on words when, you know, coming at it from both directions. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My uh, Bible study group, we've been doing uh, the the book of Psalms, you know, so, so, yeah. uh, and, 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 and a couple of people been t telling me that, that, that I don't know anybody who's done a Bible study on Psalms, you know, I mean, I mean, we're on like, you know, uh, on, on Psalm 69 now, you know, Okay. We, you know, and, and and like a lot of people, just haven't 
done that, you know. Right. You know, and and, and it's just like you see the promises of God there, and so and it's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the psalms are rich. I love I love putting psalms to music. Yep. Straight straight out of the straight out of the Bible. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, an encouragement in itself. Oh yeah. 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 I'm currently working on a project now of putting Psalm 119 to music. Um, the songs are all finished. Psalm 119, you know, is the, the longest psalm sure. and it's divided every eight verses by the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. And so I took each eight verse subsection, made a separate song out of it. So it's a series of 22 songs cool. and all, you know, all kinds of different genres. There's, you know, of course there's rock in there. It's a little heavier rock. There's some more folk. Uh, there's even one that's kind of a, um, a 40s big band sound. Uh, there's one that's kind of a mix. I don't, the only way I can describe it is kind of a mix between Dixieland jazz and, and German pub. <laughs> so that, you know, but, um, but I'm in the process of recording that now. I just have a few parts to do. Um, finally got a trombone. That was hard to find. And, uh, but I'm, I've got a saxophone clarinet player coming in to, to help record some parts. And then a few more vocals and then some mixing and mastering. And I'll be, I'll be ready to release that. So that's, that's exciting. And it's straight out of the, straight out of the King James. Awesome. I didn't take awesome. No, no liberties in rearranging any words or anything. Just some repetition, of course, with choruses and things like sure. that. But, uh, but it's, I mean, you could follow it in your, in your King James Bible. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So, awesome. So where can we get your music? Uh, I'm on SoundCloud. Okay. Um, I've got videos on YouTube. Um, I, you can basically stream my music wherever there's streaming services. It, um, I'm on Apple Music, Spotify, um, you know, pretty, I, I go through CD, CD Baby, so they they put me in everywhere. I'm, I'm on streaming services in Russia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, awesome. 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 Yeah, I, I got some feedback from, from, uh, from Italy, in fact. Wow. Which, that's that's always fun and encouraging. And and uh, and then another one from um, oh it's over by India. Okay. There. So you know it's always fun to hear from from other believers around the world like that through music. Sure, sure, sure. And Christian music is more acceptable there than here. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're kind of in a silo here, which is unfortunate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, I just keep praying for for, for America and that's yeah. all that we all we can do, you know, you know. So you know, yeah. You know, you know, and just pray the Lord, Lord have your way in America. And I'll suppress so that. So. Yeah. Pray, pray for the nation. Pray for our leaders. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep. yep. So, how can we contact you? Um, I, you can contact me through through my YouTube uh, and SoundCloud pages. Those are the two I use most often. Um, so, you know, you can leave me a notification or a message on one of those is fine. Um, those would actually be the preferred. For, or my Facebook page. I've got a uh, Facebook page for my music as well. Um, so you can you can look me up through there. Cool. Give me a note, message me, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. Definitely, 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 definitely. So, uh, uh, so uh, have you done concerts? I, I used to, my wife and I used to perform in Southeast Iowa and Christian coffee houses and things like that. That was back in the late seventies, early eighties. Okay. Uh, and then I went into the pastor, pastoral ministry and pastored in Iowa for, uh, for, for two churches for quite a while in the assemblies of God. 
that kind of put a halt to the performing. Sure. Um, performed, you know, a few times since then, but uh, I, I don't do much performing concerts. No, I'm, I'm, I play guitar in our church worship band. That's about as far as it goes. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so, uh, so, so you, so what's ahead f for you? What's ahead? Um, well, there's the Psalm 119 project that I was, that I was talking about earlier. Um, I've got several other projects that I'm working on as well. Um, what one is called uh, Warmth of the Sun's Greatest Hits. And uh, when my wife and I performed in Southeast Iowa, we went by the name Warmth of the Sun was our was our stage name. Okay. And so I'm uh, we mostly did our original songs then. A uh, few covers. We did you know a couple of Farrell and Farrell and and some uh, some covers like that, but but mostly original. And so I'm taking the originals. And when we performed, it was just me with my 12 string and our two voices. So there, there wasn't a band, um, no tracks or anything, just, just the acoustic 12. And um, so I'm taking those songs, re bringing them back to life and putting full band behind it. Um, you know, adding the electric guitars, bass, drums, uh, and all that. Um, I don't play keyboard, unfortunately. So, you know, if I, my son plays keyboard, he's, he's extraordinary on the keyboard. So if, if he has the time, then maybe I can get him to play some, he plays some on the Psalm 119 project already. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm bringing those songs back to life. Uh, gonna put that in an album, uh, another album of, of Psalms, um, other Psalms like Psalm 130, Psalm one, uh, some of those that I've put to music. Um, we used to do those as warmth of the sun as well. And, um, and then there's some other newer songs that I'm working on, um, that I'm building up enough for, for an album, uh, a couple of new songs, one new song called binary world, um, which I believe is on SoundCloud. But uh, that's that's more of a uh, more of a take on the current cancel culture, okay. uh, where you know everybody is either all good or purely evil. There's no yeah. in between, and uh, we we all live in an in between world where we're not pure, but we're not you know all evil either. Right. You know yeah. we 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 strive to live like Christ, but we mess up sometimes. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's a culture out there that they'll think if, you know, you can agree with them completely on everything, but you mess up one time, you're, you're written off as evil. And uh, so I, I call that a, a binary world um, where you're either one or the other and there's no in between. And so if, um, I'm working on a video for that, which is which is a lot of fun. It's more of like a an '80s new wave style. Um, I even use an electric kazoo in it for. <laughs> so it's just it's a fun song, but a serious message. And you know, I I take my faith very seriously. Um, I take my music seriously, but I don't take myself seriously at all. And so I'll just try to have fun with it. You know, so you'll find a, a mixture. You'll find some very serious songs, worship songs, but you'll find some novelty songs, some fun songs like Pity Pot being one of them, Binary World, several others. Cool, 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 cool. So do you have advice for other musicians? Um, yeah, um, for Psalm 119. Psalm 119, the, the hardest part of that project was getting people in to, to help because I didn't want to do all the vocals on it. Yeah, 22 yeah. songs, I thought, you know, people are going to get tired of hearing me. Yeah. So I want a, a, a variety of vocals on there. And uh, we've got some outstanding vocalists in our, in our worship band. So I brought them in and they, they put, put, put some tracks down. 
and um, then other other instruments as well. I mentioned my son on keyboard and brought in. I'm I'm not I don't consider myself a, a great lead guitarist. I'm really weak on on lead guitar. So I brought in some friends who are really good with lead. Um, had a, had a, a bass player sit in on a couple sessions and so just mix it up as much as I can and um, just have have fun with it. Cool, 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 cool. So do, do you have any advice for, for, for anybody else who wants to play music? Any, any advice? Yes. Um, first thing is, is make sure that your life is straight with God. Uh, our relationship with God is far more important than our music. As much as I love my music, sure. uh, God is priority. And um, that, that puts things in the right perspective. Um, you know, like, like I said, I take my faith very seriously. I don't take myself very seriously, but I take my faith very seriously. And uh, I'm, when I was pastoring, I was more of a teacher pastor. So things have to be true. It has to line up with biblical truth. Certainly. Um, learn some theory on the practical side, but don't uh, don't get bound to theory, music theory. Push it. Push the boundaries. Uh, break some rules. Um, do what what sounds good and right. And uh, you know, music theory has has changed some, but you see the the people that have made the most impact in music are the people that broke the rules. Mm -hmm. Did things you're did things you're not supposed to do, according to right. strict theory, and um, so you know God's a God's still a God of creation. Yeah. He still creates, and so let Him create through you. And, um, and and don't take yourself too seriously. You know, and, and realize some people are going to like your music. Some people aren't going to like your music. It's not going to speak to everybody. Be true to yourself. Be true to who you are in Christ. And let your, your creativity flow out of that. And if some people don't like it, that's okay. That's okay. Um, be secure in your relationship with God. Uh, be confident in your relationship with God. I, I believe that the that the key to humility, to being humble, is to be secure and confident in your relationship with God. Because when you're when you have that security and confidence, you don't feel you don't feel pressured to prove yourself to other people. And if other people say, you know, I don't, I don't like that song. You know, that's not the way I would have written it. Well, that's, that's fine. That's yeah. okay. But it's my song. Write your own. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't like what I did, write another one. Yeah. Um, but that, that would be, that would be my advice. Right. Thank you, Wayne. Awesome. 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 So, and let you thank you for coming on. It was my pleasure having you. Well, it's been my pleasure talking with you. Yeah, yeah. Like face, virtually face to face. Certainly, <laughs> certainly, 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 certainly. Uh, any last words? Um, be blessed. All right. Yep. Be blessed. Jesus is everything. Amen. 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 And God bless you. And uh, and I uh, will look forward to more video, videos from you. All right. All right. Keep, keep tuned in. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for yeah. your time. Yeah.
Good night. Good night. God bless you. God bless your ministry.